A Shalom Akim wa Akwath out of the elect of the nation of Israel, the nation of Yahshua Allah. And in this brief video, brief lesson, I want to share with you, brothers and sisters, a, a very uh, rare or a, a gold nugget. This is a gold nugget that I have found when I was browsing through the uh, library. Okay, and this is in page 196. And the uh, title of this chapter is called The Tribes of the West. And the book that I was browsing is called Native American Warriors, The Legendary Tribes, Their Weapons, and Fighting Techniques by Martin J. Uh, Dory. Okay. And uh, this is a picture. Okay. Of a uh, Gadite brother, okay, a uh, Gadite brother, um, which today they're known as the uh, so called Native Americans. And it says here above, a musician of the Yuma people who were initially friendly to Spanish settlers, right? And we know that those uh, Spanish settlers, they're known as the uh, biblical Hebrew Edomites, which today is a so called proclaimed white man. Which really he's red, okay? He's a, a red, okay, devil. They later, they later fought against Spanish, then U.S. attempts to control their land. So, this is a very um, uh, important uh, picture and a history of one of the tribes of Gad, okay? Because because even amongst the twelve tribes of Israel. There's uh, more tribes, okay, uh, more smaller tribes in between the actual 12 tribes of Israel and this one, okay, um, th this tribe here, Native, Native American brother tribe, okay, they are known as the uh, Quetzal, okay, the Quetzal people are also known as Yuma and I'm going to break it down why they were known as the people of Yuma, a given all praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Wa, Raka, Kwadash. Double honor to my apostles and elders at the Great Millstone Camps, which are the men that taught me the 100% truth according to the law and the prophets. Now, let's get to it, Akim. So, what I want to do first is get some, uh, share with you, brothers and sisters, okay, uh, about the uh, the Yuma tribe, which Yuma, how um, this tribe or the tribe of uh, one of the tribes of the Native Americans, how they got the name Yuma. I did some research and it says that the Edomites, okay, which really they're uh, the conquistadors, right? They coined the name Yuma, which in Spanish, Akium, okay, the word Yuma, when you really break it down, that's where you get the word Yama. Yama, uh, which means uh, a flames, okay, or a flames at the, the post of flame where you get that smoke when you're doing a, a bonfire and you see those uh, sparks coming out of the bonfire slowly making that noise. Okay, that's that, that umu, that, that smoke. That's where you get the word Yama, but in the, uh, uh, the old Spanish is known as Yuma, right? Noticing how the Native Americans cooking fires filled the valley with smoke the spanish called the indians the yumas stemming from the spanish word for smoke umu okay so getting that out of the way to uh share with you akium now the real um name okay for the tribe they were known as the people of quatsan okay the quatsan people which means those who descended okay and when you uh, get the understanding of what it means of those who descended. Okay, I did a, a quick research. It says here, uh, Quetzal, meaning those who descended, is a shortening of the name that the Quetzal believed was given to them and to other lower Colorado peoples at the time of creation on the sacred mountain, Xam Quacan, if I'm saying it right, meaning those who descended by a different way or those who descended by the way of water yeah because 
our Native American brothers, one of the tribe, 12 tribes of Israel, okay, they were created, okay, in, in a different manner, in a different fashion, okay, they were created to be, okay, the Lord's people, the Lord, the Lord's people, which his name is Yahweh, our creator, which Native Americans call our, our creator, okay, the great spirit. So, hey, that's another example of how we can uh, further prove that Native Americans are, okay, part of the uh, the, the 12 uh, tribes of Israel. Because even them, okay, they knew they were descendants, okay, from, from a higher power. So, let me get just a quick scripture here. Okay, I am from above. This is John 8, 23. And Yahweh Shai said unto them, Ye are from beneath. I am from above. Ye are of this world. I am not of this world. So the man of, or the followers of Yahweh Shai, okay, there are examples of those who came from above. Okay, they're from, okay, a whole different frequency, a whole different uh, mindset. And, that's uh, one of the meanings of, okay, those who descended, descended from what? From from the elect. Okay, the scriptures speak about, you know, the uh, the first fruits or the chosen being first fruits of creation, man. Right? This is uh, Corinthians 15.23. But every man in his, in, in his own order, Hamashiach, the first fruits, afterward, Day that are Christ as coming. Okay. So let, let me get one more. Isaiah 44 and 1. Yet now hear, O Jacob, which Jacob, that's symbolism to the 12 tribes. And in this case, the tribe of Gad, my servant and Israel, whom I have chosen. So when you're descendant, okay, uh, by a different way or a different fashion. Okay, that means you're you're elected. You're the Lord's uh, chosen, and in this case, our uh, beloved brothers, okay, from the uh, the tribe of Gad, out of the smaller tribes of the the Quatsam people. Okay, those who descended from the the waters, and I, I believe the word waters in the Hebrew, if I'm not mistaken, Akim, you want to correct me? Um, I believe it's uh, Mayan. Okay, Maya or Mayan, which could also represent the heavens descended from the heavens okay so what i want to do now is go into back to the picture and read what it says here it says the territory of yuma lay on the colorado river in what is now arizona and california the yuma were skilled in warfare right so let's get a scripture about a warfare what does the scripture speak about the Native American brothers being uh, men of war. Not only, not only are Native American brothers uh, warriors, but they're peaceful warriors. Okay, our people are very peaceful. But when it comes down to war, when you uh, when 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 you when you bother the, the lion, okay, when you bother the lion, eventually it's gonna it's gonna fight back. Because if you see. Um, you know, videos of, you know, wild animals, the, you know, hey, that's why the so-called white men called, call our brothers savages, man. Really, they're not savages. They're very peaceful. But if, if you bother them, okay, hey, they're going to re reply back, man, with full force. But it tells you here in the book of First Chronicles 12, 14, NLT version, that the warriors of Gad, from Gad, Native Americans, were army commanders. Yeah, that's why nowadays... Um, uh, you listen to uh, um, Native American uh, brothers being called chiefs, okay, chief, you know, uh, uh, big bears or, or uh, barefoot, black hawk, okay, these are uh, names of commanders. The weakest among them could take on a hundred regular troops and the strongest could take on a thousand. You see that, Akim? And in this uh, book, it's called being called uh, Native American warriors, the legendary tribes, their weapons and fighting techniques. Okay, so our brothers, though, 
They're known as uh, warrior tribes. They were also a peaceful people. And how we know they're peaceful people because that's the spirit that the Lord uh, gave, okay, the descendants of uh, of Jacob. This is Genesis 25, 27. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field. And Jacob was a plain man, dwelling in tents. You break down the word plain. Strong's H, 8535. Tom. Tom. It says perfect, complete. You go down here, it says complete, morally innocent, having integrity. One who is morally and ethically pure. You see that? And when you're descended from the heavens, being the first fruits, hey, you're, you're already pure in your spirit. Okay? You're perfect in the eyes of the Heavenly Father. You're complete. And when you uh, go into the above picture, it says that the Yuma people were friendly to Spanish uh, settlers, man. And uh, that's the thing about our people, man. Our people are very uh, gentle, even to the heathens. You know, we show the heathens uh, peace. Matter of fact, let me get a scripture. I am for peace. That's in Psalms. There's a prophecy right here. Psalms 120 and 7. I am for peace. You see that? I am for peace. So our Gadai brothers, they were always friendly. And they still are to this day. They're, they're friendly, okay? But though they're friendly, man, to, to uh, even the heathens, it says, I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. So Esau uh, took the tribe of Gad, and in this case, the uh, the people of Quetzal, okay? They saw it as a, a form of war, man. You see, that's how you know Esau's the devil. Esau sees uh, righteousness as, as something uh, wicked. But going back, okay, reading the uh, uh, this uh, beautiful um, quick paragraph, it says, The Yuma were skilled in warfare. So we just got scriptures about Gad being men of war. But were also traders who maintained links with tribes on the Pacific coast and far inland. They practiced seasonal agriculture, taking advantage of floods to irrigate their land. But they primarily supported themselves. Yeah, Gad was a, a, a self-man made. Uh, uh, that's what you call, uh, you know, real man. You know, protecting the land. You know, putting in work. Always, always in action. It says they primarily supported themselves by fishing, and this is where you get the the real. Because you know the scriptures speak about how a man shall compass, uh, a woman shall compass the man in these last days. These uh, women. They think they're strong and independent. They want to take the masculine side of the Israelite man. But here is already showing you in this paragraph examples of a, a, a masculine man. Okay, our Gadai brothers, they were su supporting themselves. Okay, that's what you call a real strong, independent man. Okay, it says by fishing from rafts, supplemented with some hunting and gathering of wild plants, you know, Gad was handling, handling business. The Yuma built light structures known as keech, consisting of a frame made from wooden poles covered in plant fiber. These were often dug into the ground to create a variant on the pit house design. That's beautiful, man, you see? So not only were our uh, Native American brothers out of Yuma, okay, on down to uh, uh, California, not only are they warriors, but they're uh, uh, hard workers, you know, kind of like Issachar, right? They practice uh, agriculture. They knew how to uh, plant uh, plant seeds. They knew how to, uh, you know, start a fire. Here are some uh, other uh, examples, pictures of our, our brothers out of... Uh, the, uh, the tribe, okay, of the Quetzal, the Quetzal people. Uh, that's beautiful, Akim. You see, that's just something I wanted to share uh, with you brothers. Okay, uh, Yuma the Quetzal, 
Native American tribes are Hebrew Israelites. Let me try to uh, edify you brothers a little, a little bit more. So we already got this one out of the out of the way. Let's go over here. It says, Yuma Indians were excellent at surviving because they were skilled farmers, fishermen, hunters, as well as warriors in battle. Now, we used uh, these different attributes for our righteousness. Okay, but when you go here into Genesis 25, 27, Esau, he was also known as a cunning hunter. You know, both uh, Hebrew Israelites and, uh, and, uh, Is and um, Edomites were hunters, but the difference is that Esau, he's a cunning Hunter, okay, because you have there's a difference between a regular hunter who does it for righteousness, but the devil this is um, the devil does, and, and, and who's the first uh, man and 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 display an Edomite, see. He hunts for sport. Okay. He don't even the traditions of, of hunting. Because really, when you hunt, okay, in American, uh, Native American tradition, our, our brothers from the tribe of Gad, uh, there, there's a, a specific way in, in when, on how, how you hunt. Okay. I'm not mistaken how Native Americans hunt, man. They actually send out prayers. You know, they send out prayers. They do some type of ritual. Even after they kill the animal, they hunt the animal. Okay, they they acknowledge the, the great spirit, but this devil here, the the Edomites, they don't acknowledge. Okay, uh, you know the Lord. They just hunt for sport, man. You see, that's why he's known as a cunning hunter. But us, on the other hand, our, our brothers, they were known as, this, as a clean hunters, righteous hunters, as well as warriors in battle. Okay, so overall, they knew what tribe was true the whole concept of real uh, masculine man you know the scriptures speak about how you know uh, a man of the lord he, he has to be gentle okay and, and that's a, really that's the main uh definition of a warrior you know a warrior it's not just somebody that that looks for a fight you know he looks for problems not a warrior is peaceful he's calm but when you, when, you, when you bother him it's, it's going to show you who he is okay but yeah Akim, you know, I just wanted to share that with you, brothers and sisters. Okay, a beautiful book. It's called Native American Warriors, the Legendary Tribes, Third Weapons, and Fighting Fighting Techniques. So, um, you know, I recommend you, Akim, go into uh, your local library and, and, you know, browse, and you might encounter this gold nugget. Okay, and it is a beautiful um, book. Hopefully, I'm able to make more lessons uh, more Amer Native American brothers, man, because, uh, you know, I have uh, testimony, you know, I've actually experienced, you know, um, you know, breaking bread with Native American brothers out here in, uh, in Arizona. Very, uh, uh, they have very beautiful spirit, man. Okay, they show you uh, brotherly love, though they might not have, uh, you know, nothing to, uh, to, to like offer you, man. You know, they always make a way you know, to offer you, you know, might be clothing, uh, you know, a sweater. And that might be their only sweater they have, you know, and, and, and they'll give it to you, man. They, they, they look at you. They, if they know you're going through something, you know, they they get together, you know, they, they, they help you out, man. That's that's a beautiful thing about Gad, man. The scriptures speak about, okay, uh, the uh, the brotherly love, man. And that's why really yeah, how shy his whole purpose, one of his purposes, okay, um, uh, was to show us the, our ancient ways of how to uh, treat uh, each other, man, you know, as, as brothers. And as my personal testimony, you know, the brotherly love that our brothers uh, from the tribe of Gad have, man, it's, it's top notch, man. It's, you know, it's, it's high level. And with that, you know, praise edifying, not kill. That would say shalom.